Epilogue. We are now approaching the end of this journey of water together. What discoveries did you make along the way? Water has a secret life. It shows us how to find happiness. It reveals the meaning of the love of nature. It shows us the path that humankind must take to find the answers we seek. Water is life. James Lovelock, a professor of biophysics, put forth the Gaia theory, the concept that the world is all one life form, an active self-regulating system. The environment on the earth is kept at a certain level so as to make life possible. The volume of oxygen in the atmosphere is always about 20% no matter where you go. Plant life produces oxygen through photosynthesis and animals breathe out carbon dioxide. The atmosphere works to maintain the temperature within a set range, so even though the seasons may change, we manage to keep our body temperature fairly constant. They say that 3.5 million years have passed since the birth of life, and while the sun may be gradually heating up, the temperature on Earth has been maintained within a range to make life possible. The world operates in perfect balance. Indeed, this planet is like one life form, and what is it that gives life to this living planet? Water, of course. Water makes it possible for plants to grow, to produce oxygen, and to maintain life. But we all realize that this balance of life is now becoming ever more perilous. We are even playing with the balance of the atmosphere. Water is beauty. Water's long journey began when it arrived on this planet in the form of lumps of ice from the far reaches of the universe. From there arose all the diverse forms of nature and life that now cover the surface of this planet. And from that point, human civilization arose and the life of each individual was born. From water emanates all beauty, the colorful grandeur of nature, the green meadows, the silk strings of rain, the clouds that filter golden sunshine, the rainbow-filled skies and the expansive sea, blue in graduation the deeper you go. Rays from the sun dance on the surface, reflecting off ocean plants and coral below. Fish of every color swim in schools that expand and contract again as if by magic. It is art, a grand performance at its finest. And then there's the crystals of water, like pearls of the highest grade, finely carved by nature, almost like grand chandeliers. The work of nature is far beyond the aspirations of the greatest artist, and the amazing thing is that it's no accident. It's all the result of a distinct intention, a hidden master plan. Its creation requires a level of intent and determination that we are incapable of understanding, much less mimicking. So then we must ask who? Kazuo Murakami, professor emeritus at Tsukuba University in Japan, has used the term something great. It is an existence that has put its signature on each one of the some 60 trillion cells of our bodies each containing enough genetic information to fill thousands of books, thousands of pages long. It is this something great that has brought order to the universe and that keeps it moving in order. It was through such a consciousness that water was brought to this earth. It was brought to this earth for the creation of beauty. Water is a mirror. Water reflects the human soul. If you say thank you to water, it will be reflected in the formation of beautiful crystals overflowing with gratitude in return. If the hearts of those who live on the planet are contaminated, then the earth as well will become that way. Very little pure water, only 3% of our total water remains on the earth and the amount suitable for human use is declining at alarming rates. Of all the water on the earth, the amount that falls from the skies and runs into the oceans is incredibly small. Almost all the water on Earth is salt water in the oceans, while most of the drinkable water is frozen, frozen in glaciers at the top of the tallest mountains. Compared to all the water that runs into the oceans, the amount available for our use is a tiny fraction, about one ten thousandth of all the water on the Earth. The outlook of the human race could be perceived as becoming more and more gloomy. The population is rising at a rapid rate, and even the groundwater, the source of last resort, is now becoming polluted. The pollution of water is the pollution of our very soul, and unless we change our consciousness, we will never be able to restore water to its pristine form. Water is prayer. Water comes to earth as the answer to our prayers, and that process continues even now. What prayer, you ask? The prayer that life will be born, breathe, and take root. 
the prayer that nature will prosper, expand, and cradle what the native people call the circle of life. The prayer that intelligence will emerge and civilizations will form to protect the earth and spread love and gratitude. Why do you think it is that when water is shown the words love and gratitude, such spectacular crystals form? The answer is that words are a form of prayer. When something is in line with the principles of nature and it interacts with water, the result is the formation of beautiful crystals. This is because nature itself is the result of prayer. Prayer is also the true nature of human beings. All races of people over time have had the element of prayer. Even in these present days when science reigns supreme, we still pray. What heart doesn't pray when a sick child clutches to life or when a loved one is far away? Water is given to answer our prayer for life, for evolution, and so human beings can look toward water and offer their prayers. Human beings are essentially crystals formed upon this earth, and that is why we have the responsibility to protect the earth by protecting our water, and the first step we can take is to return prayer to our lives. I offer you a poem about water. You are water, and the wisdom of water you know, so just allow yourself to flow, and then the wonder grows. Your soul will reach beyond the seas with harmony on prayers of peace. Never stopping, never halting, bravely water flows, brightly and boldly into the cosmos, for water knows. And then there's pictures. Further information on Masuru Emoto's groundbreaking work as well as related materials may be found at Beyond Words Publishing Incorporated, 20827 Northwest Cornell Road, Suite 500, Hillsboro, Oregon, 97124-9808, www.beyondword.com. The end of that one.